It's time for your horror medication with me, Bleeding Critic. This short story is called Boiled Egg. Sitting on the toilet, Joe was in so much pain, his body waste felt like concrete. He thought this is what Elvis must have gone through before his heart stopped. He thought he was going to pass out due to pushing so hard and the image of his vital organs being evicted with the waste. Did he eat too many eggs? After this early morning ordeal, he took his dog for a walk. Just a quick one, he was on a personal mission. Many years ago, when he was 13 years young, his mother taught him how to boil an egg. She was a beautiful woman until that huge truck flattened her skull and upper torso. If she was wearing her glasses at the time, she would have probably survived. The last act of family togetherness was her teaching Joe about eggs and how good they are in moderation. As the years passed, his favourite dish would be the classic egg and fries. He continued his mother's fascination of the egg. He appreciated the shape of the egg, its pure, smooth beauty. No doors or locks, just sealed shut, yet extremely vulnerable. The highlight for Joe was hitting the cooked egg with a spoon, cracking and shedding its shell protection, then watching the yolk seep out of its wound. Joe would stare Imagine and admire the beauty of this ritual. This fascination developed into smashing raw eggs, causing carnage, mess and that distinct smell. This triggered his next obsession. He was drawn to the beautiful egg-like shape of a pregnant tummy, shaped like an egg nurturing a growing tiny baby. Two years ago he attacked his first pregnant target, a young woman pregnant for eight months. Joe just walked up to her in a crowded London street during rush hour and punched her stomach at least five times. He always avoided getting caught. His evil craving was thought out with care, forensic detail and instinct. He would wait in surgeries and chemists, reading the names of the pregnant ones when it was time for their appointment with the doctor. Their names were displayed on the large dot matrix screen. He knows their name. As the chemist section was part of the surgery, he would wait for a pregnant woman to pick up her medication. This is when a member of staff would ask for her address for security before handing over the medication. Now he knew where they lived. The vicious attacks always occurred in the home of these vulnerable women. In two years, he devastated 13 loving couples. Internal womb damage was so severe, all 13 could never have children again. Relationships and lives destroyed by a large stranger. When he got bored of targeting the pregnant, the other consistent shape he became fixed on was the shape of eyes. He had a van and made a sign up that said, how am I driving, with a phone number. If he spotted someone driving wearing glasses, he would intentionally drive badly, hoping the sensible driver would phone and complain. What the glasses wearing driver didn't realise the number on the nuisance van was in fact direct to Joe. The call would arrive and Joe would be professional and discreet and ask for a postcode and number purely for our records and rest assured your details will not be passed on to anyone else apart from Joe's on his way to you right now arriving to the home of the sensible Joe's work would then commence his mother taught him about eggs and their simple beauty and nutritional value this led to a 24 month obsession with pregnant women which developed into the stabbing of strangers eyes he chose people wearing glasses, as Joe believed, as their sight was deteriorating anyway. The scope of living without sight or minimal sight was inevitable. Joe was just speeding up the eye decay process in a horrific way. 
Joe had a fascination with pens, ballpoint ones, not only because they were actually cheaper, but because they were perfect for attacking eyes sitting comfortably in their sockets. Joe blinded six people so far. Unfortunately, he killed one by accident. Once he stabbed both eyes, the victim ran screaming, disorientated, over a balcony and fell to their death, just missing a swimming pool, landing splat on concrete. Joe wished he recorded the sound of crashing bone, rip of skin and end of life. This is no excuse for what Joe had become, but his background was typical, join the dots leading to the psychotic. Yes, he was bullied at school because he was of large build and had ginger hair. His wife was the same size as him. She too was overweight and they looked so much alike. Melanie could easily be mistaken for Joe if her hair colour was the same. Melanie had no idea her husband spent so much time plotting, planning his next victims, hiding behind his computer screen as geeks do. Tweedle dumb and Tweedle damaged loved each other, and so did Joe's fists. After horrifically assaulting the pregnant vulnerable and those few wearing glasses, Joe would be great to live with. However, when plotting and planning his next victims, he became argumentative and extremely violent. In a red haze of mist, Melanie's death from the power of his hands, smashing her head repeatedly onto a hot electronic stove, cracking skull like the shattering of eggshell, and that smell from her scalded, burnt flesh. After killing Melanie, he reached the end of his life. He couldn't continue without her. He cried like an injured animal for 13 minutes after her heart stopped. He was grateful that the double glazing in their home muted her screaming. The chain of events, the shape of eggs to the shape of pregnant stomachs to eyes, then the final harrowing ending, bashing his wife's skull in. Now it was time for him to save on police time and the pain of future victims by ending his sad, lonely life. He was overweight, like a big round ball, almost egg-shaped. He considered getting his body crushed in an industrial car crush compressor and the option of hiding inside a hydraulic garbage disposal truck came to mind. Instead, on the same night, he killed his wife. He left the scene of carnage in his home exactly as is. He drove for a while and parked his sports car next to a large tree by the road. He then tied rope around the tree and then fed the rope through the driver's side window. And then Joe made the other end of the rope into a noose. He then placed it round his neck, nice and tight. He had a lot of rope. Pressing the ignition on, he thought how lovely the empty road looked in the night sky. Peace will be with him soon. He slammed his foot on the accelerator, driving off in a straight line at high speed. The force ripped his head clean off from his body, decapitated. On separation, his brain still managed to allow Joe to watch the tarmac rushing towards him, every frame in slow motion. Then his ginger-haired skull bounced once and then exploded like an egg dropped onto a kitchen floor. I'm bleeding critic. I hope my story boiled egg damaged you. Thanks for watching.